Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more Rogue Trader and I think we are ready to head to the next story objective. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so we're going to have to spend some of our points to uh, make this a safer trip, but I mean right now we have 17 of them, so let's see. Okay, so that was just basically a circle. We did scan at each of these, so these don't connect to anything else. Alright. Let's just go ahead and spend three of these, make this safe. And off to Mundus Valantius. Lord Captain, I keep receiving reports about malfunctions among the various ship systems. This time we are dealing with inexplicable temperature fluctuations. Thermal control failures were observed not only in individual compartments, but even in the soldiers' protective equipment. Several crew members have suffered from burns and frostbite. The tech priests are performing the rites of machine spirit pacification and remain convinced that the issue were caused by the spirit's obstinacy and defiance. Their reports claim the incidents remain well within the scope of expected performance. Over the last few days, complaints about the malfunctioned thermal controls have dwindled. But the crew members have started whispering that our vessel is haunted. The tech priest's assurances that only the machine spirit's tempers are to blame are doing nothing to dissuade these ridiculous rumors. Okay, that's probably gonna come to a head soon. Okay, so this is where one of our story events are. Alright, we're getting more scans. Now, I still don't think we found Kiava Gamma. Now, is Kiava Gamma the... I think that's the name of the planet, so I actually need to check the journal to see what the name of the system is that we're looking for. But it would also be marked if we had found it, so... But I still want to... Let's see. Kranak. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think we've found Kranak. I don't see any of these with a symbol on it. Okay. But I think we found our path that's going to lead us down to the Nameless Star. Oh yeah, and Forgotten Twins. That was another one that was um, part of one of the quests. Alright, but for now, we're heading to our capital. This should be a big one. Um, Kunrad might be here. Lord Captain, Master Helmsman on the line, I can report that the quest for the capital world of the Von Valantius dynasty is finally at an end. Dargonus is straight ahead. We have received countless greetings. Your subjects would like to know when their master will be arriving. The merchant captains taking refuge in the orbital docks of Dargonus race to send you priceless welcoming gifts, hoping to buy your favor and to make an impression on the rogue trader. Tell Dargonus the rogue trader is coming home. It will be done, Lord Captain. After the connection to the Master Helmsman is cut, the device crackles with Heinrichs' voice. Yeah, we just warned them. I realize as I push that button, but it is what it is. Lord Captain, I will be pleased to accompany you during your visit to Dargonus, so I can personally introduce Achilles Scalander, a servant of the Golden Throne who previously attended Lady Theodora on Dargonus. I am counting on your benevolence. Okay. Alright, let's visit everywhere else first. <laughs> Is there a way for me to see which things I have um, extractums on? Okay, so we still haven't found any adamantine. We don't have weapons, and we don't have mechanisms right now. So those are things that we really need to keep an eye out for.
How did this world look before it was enveloped in this fiery shroud? Was it your ancestor's Ellen Talk, who disgorged its core in some ill-considered act? I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me. I'm, I'm a big old dummy. What would I know about it, huh? <laughs> Okay, so we've got a Adeptus Mechanicus ship right next to Dargonus. Should we check that out first? I didn't realize we were getting uh, experience for those. I don't even know how to get to this menu again. Um. Eh, doesn't matter. Might be one of these. There we go. Worlds of the Expanse. Well, looks like we found at least one of each. Well, I don't know that actually. If we haven't found it, they may not show up on this list, so. Okay, do a quick save and then let's go to this Adeptus Mechanicus ship. Lord Captain, a transport shuttle bearing the markings of the Adeptus Mechanicus is approaching the ship. Major Tarzus's delegation intends to board our ship and gain an audience with your lordship. This is exactly how they phrased it. He intends not hum he intends not humbly requests. Many of my tech comrades neglect diplomacy when interacting with the laity. It is regrettable. Okay. What do they want? The honorable servant of the Omnissiah have ignored our request. Such arrogance is hardly trivial. It rather appears to be a part of their intimidation tactics. <laughs> Punish them for their disrespect by letting them dock at the farthest and most dilapidated airlock so that it takes them an eternity to traverse the ship. Wow. I'm a, I'm a petty bitch. What can I say? <laughs> a most... Humane punishment, your lordship. <laughs> Requesting permission to be present at the audience granted to my tech comrades. Okay, permission granted. Um, that's probably who I'd take out anyway, I guess. Oh, we have a level up. I don't even know when that happened. Maybe we'll take care of that before we go down to the planet. Oh, it's Opticon. Oh no, they're all Opticons, right? Opticon 22 is like a bunch of them. A group dressed in the crimson of the Priesthood of Mars walks towards you. Their gazes are fixed on Pascal. You note that the group is not monolithic. Some of its members are more heavily armed and follow a large tech priest clad in battle armor. Others keep a respectful distance and cast inquiring looks at their own leader whose hunched posture belies his tall frame. I wonder if that means I can, um, if I can turn in that quest to any of the Opticon 22s. Despite the hood hiding his face, you recognize him as Opticon 22, whom you encounter on. It is that one. Wasn't two of them? Yeah, okay, doesn't matter. So Opticon 22 is the one we met. And then Opticon with other, n you know, I gotta see. I thought both of them were marked Opticon 22, but... The enormous tech priest points his hand at Pascal and lets out a booming roar, not unlike a factory alarm. It makes your very bones vibrate. Harold's servo skulls, marked with the emblem of the cog, follow in his wake. They blare shrilly. Thou shalt not suffer a heretic in thy forge, for rust begets rust. Pascal Hanoiman, in the name of the Adeptus Mechanicus, you are under arrest. Really? The hunt servant of the Omnissiah turns to you. Yeah, see, this guy's also marked as 22. Diplomacy mode engaged. Announcement, the Adeptus Mechanicus offer their apologies. Would like to inform you of the necessity of conducting an operation to detain, arrest, terminate a faulty unit on the rogue trader's territory. Okay, let's study the two priests of Mars. It's 100%. You identify the rare armor the enormous tech priest is wearing as a Secutor's plated mechanized suit. 
It carries the imprints of many battles and has markings that announce its stat status as a relic. Some of the armor's damage looks fairly severe to the point of endangering, endangering its operation. The slivers of flesh revealed under the steel are marked with terrible chemical burns. Every now and then convulsions shake the tech priest's body, and a painful sounding hiss comes from his vox. The tall tech priest who spoke to you looks more peaceful, and makes a point of not drawing his weapon. There is an air of concern about the way he frequently glances over at his fellow, scrutinizing his condition. Who are you? In a burst of chattering, the servo skulls hasten to translate their master's mighty Veneric Hal, an instrument of the Omnissiah authorized to punish and exact vengeance, known by the designation Tarsus Hanoiman. Another Hanoiman. I wonder if they think he's the heretic, but it's the... I mean, obviously it has something to do with his master, but... Identification codes recognized and confirmed. These units are who they declare themselves to be. On what charge are you trying to arrest a member of my retinue? This heretic is accused of stealing personal identification codes, spreading tech heresy on the world of Kiava Gamma, and making an attempt on the life of a servant of the Omnissiah. The deafening roar from the tech priest Vox makes you grimace in pain. You touch your ear and notice blood on your fingers. The faulty unit will be removed in the name of the Omnissiah. I condemn you. Lightning flashes across the warrior's armor. Agony resounds in the blare of his Vox alarm. What is happening? And let's see, Heretech. A tech priest who has renounced the dogmas of the cult mechanicus in favor of delving into forbidden, chaos-tainted technologies. In contrast, Pascal speaks quietly and coldly. You are malfunctioning, tech comrade. I deem your logical conclusions questionable. The statement is false, tech brother Tarsus, and Oyman is willingly undergoing holy torment deterioration, which, however, does not affect, does not critically affect his cognitive capacity for data analysis. Unit calling itself Pascal Hanoiman. We have information that implicates you, having learned that you are a member of the retinue, a maintenance specialist in the service of Rogue Trader Von Valancius. We have come here with the goal of meeting you, intercepting you, engaging you in combat. Damn. Point to the furious servant of the Omnissiah. Do you have proof that this tech priest is who he claims to be? Confirmed, according to the archive entry, Majos Explorator Tarsus Hanoiman served on maintained the ship identifier classified uh, in the capacity of a reliquary caretaker. He sustained extensive damage to both the organic and the sacred part of his body in a series of sacrilegious breaches of the rite of operation and assassination attempt. Okay, um, are you trying to say that our Pascal had something to do with the assassination attempt on him? Owing to a statistically fortunate coincidence, by the Omnissiah's grace, enough of his operational capacity was preserved for him to don a Goliath model sacred battle harness, which would preserve his vital functions, functionality. Archive entry personally data sealed by the caption of the identifier classified. The sound from the tech priest Vox is like the moan of a bending steel beam. A servo skull declares, For vengeance I thirst as I tread the path of vengeance following a blasphemous miscreant's bloody tracks. Analysis of the security system showed that the assassin's heretics infiltrated the reliquary using tech brother Tarsus's unique identification code. Someone had stolen, duplicated brother Tarsus's identity, which is a grade 3 transgression and the unit making the allegedly criminal claim of being Pascal Hanoiman is known to have previously used entered the stolen code. Okay. Does this big fellow have to roar? It's making my ears bleed, which is bad. Negative. Upon completing his sanctif sanctification procedure, Tech Brother Tarsus vowed modified his engrammatic augmentics algorithms in order never to desecrate solely tarnish his mouth box cognitive process with flesh speak. The servo skull screeches. 
Mine is a pure and banneric tongue that preserves only what is true and shuns scrap data. Okay. Are you saying that this bloodthirsty hulk is a saint? This statement is true. Brother Tarsus has the honor of wearing authorization to wear the sacred battle harness that belonged to Major's militant, Auspector Gracchus, one of the first champions of the faith, Holy Scouts, to join the cause of conquering the Coronas Expanse. After his death, the termination of his vital functions at the hands of Xenos, his damaged Goliath class armor was preserved and given the status of a relic. The Adeptus Mechanicus regard this act as voluntary, Martyrdom self-destruction for the glory of the Deus Mechanicus. This battle harness is classified as Cogni Armor. The machine spirit living in it is strong and wise, but it took major damage in the course of Majos Gracchus's last battle. Besides sacred litanies and imperatives of service to the Omnissiah, the armor broadcasts a continuous signal of suffering and agony into Tech Brother Tarsus's mind. Sounds horrible. Okay. Can you tell me more about what is happening on Kiavagama? That planet belongs to me. According to Vox interception data, the planet's fabricator sensor made incorrect blasphemous modifications to manufacturum working procedures, which qualifies as a lapse into sacrilege. The Adeptus Mechanicus are hereby officially notifying House von Valantius of having commenced an investigation into operation to remove fabricator sensor Cubis Delphim. Estimated time to procedure completion, 3.7 solar years. I don't know what any of that means. Our data suggests that the unit which used Majos Explorator Hanoiman's identification code performed an unauthorized upgrade on the planetary Vox array and introduced data deemed to be scrap code into its operation. This fact points to this unit's criminal complicity with the heretic Cubis Delphin. Okay. Uh, Pascal, you can speak for yourself. Anything to say? He replies firmly. His Vox crackling with a hint of indignation. I deny these charges. I never plotted against my tech comrade. My cognitive purity vows were never distorted. My unique identification code was never stolen. I am the true Majos Explorator Hanoi, and I am not guilty. The tech priest's deep guttural roar blends with the servo skull's high-pitched whine. False witness. Let's see. I am not handing Pascal over to you unless I see evidence. Let us get to the bottom of this matter together. Request approved. Ready to work in cooperative mode. Tarsus gives you a hofty look and lets out a howl of wrath. Archiving. Tech brother Tarsus opposes lay participation in the investigation search for the truth. The unit Opticon 22 advises in favor of the House von Valantius representative's participation request. Okay. Let's start here. Pascal has accompanied me on my travels for a while now, and I swear to it that he is no criminal. Request for cooperation reviewed and accepted. I request Tech Brother Tarsus's consent to the co-participation of representatives of the Von Valantius dynasty in the investigation proceedings. A sacrilegious conspiracy. I refuse help from laypersons. I am a cog of the Deus Mechanicus that grinds down corruption, and I will carry out the sentence immediately. Pascal freezes, but green sparks light up in his visor. He extends a hand towards Tarsus and replies in a clinging voice, Let the cycle be discontinued. You realize Pascal's words are coming from both his own Vox and Tarsus's. Then every sensor on the executioner's battle harness lights up at once blindingly, and the wounded armored Leviathan lets out a deafening roar of pain. So I wonder if this is going to come back to the fact that, uh, like, I wonder if his, like, arms are, like, hit. We surmise that he might have multiple personalities with, through his tech, and I wonder if this is leading into that. Attention, priority notification. Service units of the Kappa Thread supply line are unauthorized to confront the rogue trader. Command retreat and reinitiate negotiations. Heretic Pascal, I will wreak punishment upon you in the name of the day as Mechanicus. Conflict inevitable. Uh oh. <laughs> Did Opticon just leave? He's like, all right, I'm just gonna back off. <laughs> all right.
Put you there. You there. to being ordered around. Alright. Everybody's got a decent amount of health here. It's always Argenta. Let's be real. I mean, it looked like I took 30 damage, but then she didn't take any. I'm not sure what that was about. Oh, it must have been on this. Destructible cover. Gotcha. Okay. Um, can you see big guy right now? Okay. Yes, you can. This tedium is beneath me. Okay, does that get us enough to kill? Mm, hard to tell if that there's one HP on the end of that. Or I not. am not your Xenos pet. Another soul slips God, well beyond done. the veil. I mean, she's just a crit monster, isn't she? I understand your intent. Perry. Okay, Pascal. My vow is to serve. Big old buff debuff. Cogitation fails. Um, are you marked? Okay, I think. Request denied. All right. Every single enemy is marked as prey right now. Tear through him. <laughs> She's so good. She's Doubt so good at her. Mm, yeah, that line doesn't quite get me there, does it? I go here.
Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to get two people with that if I do that, so... taking hits right now. Okay, I'm glad that parried. Um, I wish that was putting him in this, but that's I okay. Will do my duty. It will be done. Indeed. Okay, he's marked. Give you a buff. I won't compromise my principles. I'll see to it personally. Victory is imminent. Ah. It well struck. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Okay, buff you up. Running by Nerico right. The Omnissiah knows all, <gasps> comprehends all. Okay, let's do this one. Let the cycle be so now he's also debuffed quite a bit. Who, if not me? Fields are always drowned in Man, she keeps dodging and I love it. Another bird dodging girl.
Can you hit this guy? You can. If it serves your cause. I am not your Xenos pet, monkey. Emperor, move through me! Be the fire in my heart! Nice. Requesting cessation of hostilities. Point to Tarsus, help your brother. The unit that called itself Tarsus in Oymen is dead, has been disabled. This material asset is beyond restoration or reuse as spare parts. Relic gone. After a pause, Pascal bows his head and a Beneric Requiem pours out of his vox. Despite the misconceptions, he was a servant of the Omnissiah. I am sorry that you had to kill a comrade. I also regret, have a negative assessment of this event. The Adeptus Mechanicus still accused the unit identifying itself as Pascal Neumann of criminal theft of a unique identification code. Unlike Tech Brother Tarsus, I am not authorized to immediately arrest, execute the unit, but neither am I authorized to drop the inquiry. There are no apostates among us. The piercing voice from the Voxent is more overwhelming than Tarsus's thunderous roar. Tech Brother Tarsus and the machine spirit that lived in his battle harness succumbed to the suffering that beset them. Their judgment was rash and erroneous. Now their torment is over. I declare them martyrs and am requisitioning Tarsus and Oyman's neural augmentic for the purposes of preserving his blessed memory. A mechanical or electronic cybernetic substitute for biological limbs or organs. As astonished tech priests look on, Pascal leans over the slain man's body and extracts the augmentic from his skull. His movements are as precise as they are respectful. Listen, silence. With each word, Pascal's voice grows more powerful and majestic. You saw the agony your tech brother Tarsus was in. His unbridled pain spurred faith. His pain spurred faith intimidated you, yet you were silent. Reverence stopped you from raising your voices to proclaim that the machine spirit with which his mind had merged was morbidly afflicted. The imperative of reverence had paralyzed your will, and you watched a tragedy unfold in silence. The Sixth Universal Law states that comprehension is the true path to knowledge, yet the procedural cycle has robbed you of your comprehension. Therefore, let the cycle be discontinued. There is a clang as Opticon's knee presses into the floor. Crimson hooded heads are bowed. Let the cycle be con discontinued. The radiant light pouring out of Pascal's visor grows dimmer. Static creeps back into his voice. Let the cycle be discontinued, tech comrades. Pascal, there is one small point I'm not clear on. What just happened? Pascal's Vox synth crackle somewhat tentatively. 
I decided to sustain my words with an excerpt from one of the blessed Amarnath sermons on loss of internal and external function. Verse 4. My analysis deemed it appropriate. And what was the reason for that act of genuflection? It has been a long time since the words of the Messiah of discontinuing were last spoken openly over public communication bans. We respectfully welcome wisdom's return. So he is not forgotten after all. The Messiah of discontinuing? Is that how you refer to Amarnath? Following Archmage, uh, Archmajos Amarnath's partial uh, last cessation, removed from the chain of command, that was the authorship, authorship attribution on a series of sermons on discontinuing the cycle that were disseminated across the Cognizance fleet. It was, in fact, a title used by many in times past. Okay. Do you know where Amarnat is now? Data unavailable. No reports have mentioned Archmajos Amarnat since the incident on the Ar Arc Mechanicus Hermetico, which led to the presumed destruction disappearance of that void ship. My archive has no data on the Hermetico incident. The vessel was the Blessed Amarnat's base of operation. Is it lost then? Pascal's voice is filled with anxiety. So, are Amarnat's teachings not heretical then? This statement is false, contrary to what many servants of the Omnissiah thought they knew preferred to believe. The fleet's supreme conclave never formulated issued an official statement on that decision. 37% of the supreme conclave's members openly support Archmajor's Amarnath's views and disappeared, were removed from the chain of command, under circumstances that were classified. The supreme conclave has not had a quorum ever since. Whoa. Okay, were you among his followers then? Negative. I had no contact with Archmajor Samarnat and was never a member of his flock, Disciples Retinue. However, my analysis of the doctrine he outlined inspired in me deep respect for trust in him. Okay. I presume the conflict between you and Pascal has been resolved? The data receives, uh, received provides a basis for calling the Fallen Tech Brother Tarsus' hypothesis into question. Out of respect for, due to lack of authorization to indict followers of the Messiah of Discontinuing, we will not proceed with the detainment, arrest, or termination. The Omnissiah knows all, comprehends all. Thank you, Tech Brother Opticon 22. Okay, now that the conflict has been resolved, you may remain aboard my ship. Request denied. But I have a I have a quest to turn in. <laughs> the Kappa Thread Supply Line delegation is leaving. Uh, Dargonus express gratitude for the hospitality ceasefire and proclaims its intent to return to Footfall to resume performing its regular functions. The tech priest looks over at Pascal as if waiting for something. But I have a quest to turn in. Pascal's mech and dendrite briefly touches the shoulder of Opticon 22, who bows respectfully. Let me turn in the quest! <laughs> Wait, Opticon! I don't want to go all the way back to Footfall to turn it in. Well, I guess that's just too damn bad, huh? Okay. Reject the flesh rank one. Is that the same as the one you had before? So, yeah, it's, it's not. Damn, I was hoping it'd be an upgrade for the one that he used to have. But it looks like it's not. Okay. Power sword. Oh, it's this room again. Okay. Okay, we go that way. Got our Is loot. There money to be made? To the void ship. Well, to the void ship bridge. We're still on the void ship. You take my meaning. Okay.
Why does it keep going to the wrong thing whenever I click that the first time? We're not a grand strategist. <laughs> That's so weird. All right, choosing a new ability. So we took Inspire last time. Um, wasn't Didn't we kind of like the sound of assign objective? The Master Tactician marks an enemy if that enemy is killed by one of the Master Tactician's allies before the beginning of the Master Tactician's next turn. That ally gains momentum and a plus five to all characteristics until the end of combat. All right, let's read through them all. One friendly creature within 10 cell radius. Um, the target ally or the master tactician gains plus one resolve for every five stacks of tactical advantage. Um, the master tactician has. They lose half of their stacks. This affects stacks and lasts until the end of combat. Till the beginning of the uh, tactician's next turn. They gain stacks of tactical advantage equal to a percentage of all momentum the target gains. Okay. So if you if you do it right, you're going to be gaining a ton more um, stacks than you lose. That that would be the ideal, right? Twenty plus three times the fellowship bonus. So right now it's only a five. It's very close to a six, but it's only a five. Okay, 35%. So the momentum gained, like that actual number that we're gaining in the, um, in the battle, feels very nebulous to me, but because I'm not tracking it, right? Um, hmm. I'm not actively tracking it. But we get our our super ability, whatever it's called, um, when we hit 175. So I, I could... Hmm. I don't know, man. Okay. Target gains plus two temporary wounds and a plus one additional temporary wound for every two stacks of tactical advantage the Master Tactician has. the Master Tactician loses half of their stacks of tactical advantage. Whenever the target loses temporary wounds from damage, the target gains momentum equal to the number of temporary wounds lost. I mean, think about it. There's been lots of times where we've had, like, a stack of, like, 45. And that's, like, a ton of extra temporary wounds. Let's do Strong Point. Okay, Heinrichs. Athletics is really high. I'm going to take athletics. Okay, and a new ability. You have access to a lot of options. Elusive Shadow. For one round, the assassin becomes the lowest priority target for enemy attacks and gains the elusive effect. They can move through enemies. They gain a plus agility bonus to dodge and a perception bonus to dodge reduction. Okay. The assassin attack deals 10% additional damage. And all half cover provides the assassin 50% cover efficiency. I mean, sounds pretty good. Uh, poise to strike. Makes an enemy suffer a minus percentage armor and minus deflection until the end of the assassin's turn. If there is only one enemy adjacent to them, the assassin also gains a plus percentage to dodge until the assassin's next turn. Okay. Dashes in a straight line. I like Elusive Shadow. That one just sounds really good. I 
Assassin's Attacks grants plus 40 dodge to the target for this attack. Oh yeah, this is the one where, like, if it hits, it's good, but it's not as likely to hit. We're taking Elusive Shadow. Okay, here's what I might do, is I might take Pyromancy. Master of Flame, Psyker who is able to create Searing Infernos out of thin air, Pyromancy is one of the most spectacular and destructive forms of, psych of psychic ability. Those who face a Pyromancer in combat are oft reduced to naught but a pile of charred bones. I, somebody in one of my comments said that when you take this, it also gives you one of the abilities in that tree. I don't know if that's true, but we're gonna find out. Ignite, right there. Ten percent armor penetration, twelve damage to the target. Ten percent armor penetration. Target creatures must pass an agility resistance test with a minus ten penalty to stop burning. Okay. Okay. Temporary wounds. All affected allies gain negative fifty percent less damage from the next attack. Bulwark. Gains damage deflection against ranged attacks equal to the number of stacks of unyielding beacon. Vanguard becomes immune to push and force movement effects until their next turn. Forces an enemy in their melee range to immediately attack the Vanguard. All of the Vanguard allies who are wielding melee weapons may make an attack of opportunity. Vanguard chooses an ally. All enemies in a three cell radius around this ally must make a willpower resistance test. On a failed test, they become priority target. Maybe that one. There's a lot of abilities in Vanguard that have to do with um, him being the priority target, and I don't think we have an ability for pulling that aggro. So maybe we'll do this so that we can actually build something into that. Because it seems like most of the Vanguard abilities seem to be built off of this shit. Okay, we'll take Carouse there. Should we take Medicaid, actually? Make him a little bit better at healing himself or others when we actually end up doing that in battle. Let's do that. Let's take Medicaid. His athletics and carouse are really high. Okay, you have lots of options too. This ability can only target allies that have at least one melee weapon in one of their weapon sets. The target immediately gains an additional turn, during which they gain the ability to use charge and only this ability. Weird. Target ally gains a plus to their willpower and toughness until the end of combat. Navigator decreases Vel degradation. All allies gain a plus to willpower bonus deflection against all warp damage. Okay, that's a thought. Deals damage to all targets in a line and inflicts the soul burn effect. Target suffers damage at the start of their turn. At the end of their turn, they must pass a willpower test to remove the flames. Ooh. That one's cool, too. Four cell radius. Suffer a penalty to their willpower and toughness until the end of combat. Curse until the end of combat. All incoming warp damage is increased. 
and all other types of incoming damage are increased by something else. Okay. Navigator designates a square. The enemy closest to that square immediately moves up to four cells towards it. If multiple enemies are the same distance from that point, all of them move. The targets move even if they are stunned or immobilized. I, I might want that one. Cool. I might take that. Alright, so a movement ability. Basically, this, this will allow us to control the movements of some people. Put them into places we want them to be. That could be very useful. Okay. Argenta! What are we going to do to make you absolutely um, crazy? <laughs> Wildfire has been awesome. The Arch Militant immediately gains a plus two movement points if the Arch Militant has stacks of versatility. Those stacks are doubled until the end of the turn, but the Arch Militant loses all stacks that were added at the end of the turn. Interesting. But you lose all stacks afterwards, so it's kind of like a blitz ability. It's like, okay, um, I use this so that I can use wildfire easier, and like, yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's called Reckless Rush, so yeah, checks out. What is Devastating Attack again? Next attack, if it hit, will cause all the targets to make a Toughness Resistance test. If failed, the targets will suffer a negative effect based on the attack's damage type. Gains the Cautious Approach effect until the end of combat. Instead of the usual bonuses from versatility, the Arch Militant gains plus 5% dodge and parry. I don't know what Cautious Approach effect is. I guess I'm going to take Devastating Attack. I don't, I don't understand these two, so... <laughs> Makes it hard to choose that when I'm like, I don't even know how to use it. <laughs> okay. Um, a common talent. You got it. Um, swift movements could be good for you. Ooh. Oh, yes. Um, so we're just making Argenta a god at this point, I think. So when firing heavy weapons, critical hit chances increase by plus uh, ballistic skill bonus percent and critical damage is increased by plus three times the ballistic skill bonus percent. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Argenta's a god. Okay, you've got Claim the Bounty, Over Penetration, and Armor Penetration. The next attack that hits a target marked as Prey is always a critical hit. really good too. Whenever an ally attacks a target marked as prey, this attack deals plus percentage additional damage against half of the bounty hunter's current bonus to critical hit chance and critical damage granted by hunt down the prey. Raid and piercing shot. Sound Both sound really good. We're taking Raid.
Let's give you piercing. No, do I want that, actually? Claim the bounty. Okay, that's everybody, right? Good. Okay. Well, I think this is where we're going to end this episode, and in the next one, we're uh, finally going to make it down to... Uh, uh, Dargonus. So, yeah, thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters Darren York, ZTD, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, Chris Murphy, JW, Quinless, Vlada 101, Andy Ford, Bruce Wizzle, Black Mamba 90, Eureka Gecko, A Happy Fat Panda, Turkeyfoot 27, Pedo Kuto, Shadow Raven, Anna Kate the Great, and Nadia N. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.